and a second man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple to ask alms of them that were about to enter into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John, fastened his eyes upon them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter fastened his eyes upon with John and said, Look on us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he anxiously gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Peter said unto him, Silver and gold have I none. Yes, sir. We're preachers. <laughs> but such as I have, give I thee. Not in my name, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. <clears throat> And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And he, leaping up, stood. Walked and entered with them into the temple. Walking, that's progress. <laughs> leaping, that's shouting. And praising God. That's all of it. I like that story. Yes, sir. And as I said, it almost brings tears to my eyes for you to stay here. I didn't know anybody would want to hear anybody preach now after Kilgo preach. But let me give you at least a brief summary of this passage. It was Luke's account first half of the book of the Acts, and it's a beautiful story to my mind. <clears throat> when I preached in the Baptist World Alliance in Scandinavia, Copenhagen, Denmark, I gave this same text, dealt with it in a measure, and had I not promised that I might at least mention it and emphasize as briefly and yet as possible and as emphatically as necessary under the conditions, I would not have even, and I did say for the brethren to put it off and let me preach some other time, but uh, the conductors of this part felt that having announced it, somebody might be disappointed. That's right. It might be more disappointed than <laughs> I getting up here to preach. <laughs> I've been abroad several times, and I've been a student of the relics and historical imprints in the Holy Land. And uh, I want to give you just a word or two of the geography of the temple in which this man walked and entered, walking, leaping, and praising God. Those are three striking aspects. Yes. Now, some of you fellows might try to get rid of all, one of those, but I like all three of them. <laughs> yes, sir. I went upon that lofty mountain, and I'm glad that the temple was erected on a high mountain, a mossy top mountain. And at the base of that mountain was a flowing stream of refreshing water that was really alive. And this stream was bordered with a variety of blooming flowers that transformed, transfigured 
that melting into marvelous attraction. And I'm glad they put the temple up there. Yes. I'm glad that God blessed me to go up there and see it and to enter it. Now, that temple housed all of the public affairs, including agencies of the government. That very house was also the meeting place for the superintendent of public instruction. All phases of public life, political, educational, religious, and what have you, met in that temple, but each of all its allotted schedule. Now the ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, was the church's hour. <laughs> and Peter and John were on their way to church. And I want you to know another thing, that all of the business that was to be carried on in the temple, and all of the attractions therein were depicted on the exterior so that people who had no business in there could stop and get an idea of what was inside by the paintings of the world's greatest artists that they saw on the outside. And uh, this is what happened. This man was carried daily to shake a cup, we'd call it, placed on the outside of the gate, and nobody, not even a beggar, was allowed within that sacred enclosure, unless they had some business in there. And some of you have, many of you. But that's why Paul says these men walked up. Sometimes when the one function would get out, they'd play croquet on the lawn, and the man would get near them, some of them would go by and pitch something in his cup. But I see the church coming. Yes, sir. Represented by two preachers, Peter and John. <laughs> and the man was shaking his cup or lifting his hands or looking wishfully. And the spokesman said, uh, Silver and gold, Peter said to him, have I none? Uh -huh. As I said a while ago, we're preachers. <laughs> <laughs> but such as I have, give I thee. Yes, sir. If you take such as I have, they won't have to bring you here. You can get up. All right. All right. All right. All right. And you can go with us in the temple. Yes. Right. Now, we've given a lot of aspects and a lot of angles of this thing tonight. Boy, I like that foreign mission stuff. God knows what he's doing. He's got the right folks doing everything. Yeah. Uh, he must undoubtedly want me to say a few things tonight. <laughs> All these folks waiting here. Yeah. 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 Such as I have, give I thee. And if you'll accept it, you won't have to be brought here no more. You'll leave here walking. And then he said, not in my name. Say it, say it. Boy, I could give a great string of notables now and historians of and a lot of time would permit me and, oh, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And, and tell you that uh, I'm not either one of those. We're preachers. We don't represent silver and gold. But if you can get such as I have, <laughs> you, can, you can get your own silver and gold. You can make some silver and gold. You can get up from there. It won't have to be the burden of society. The man anxiously gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them, as I said. And they said, no, it won't be silver and gold, <laughs> but we can walk. <laughs> and if you want to get up and walk, come with us. Yeah. Now, it was the church's hour. 
And thank God for these two preachers doing two things that I want to start with. Yes. First, being on time. Yes. Now stop. <laughs> if these boys had have been two minutes late, they'd have missed that chance. Yes. Church folks ought to go according to schedule. Yes, sir. I don't like seeing about a drag in church at the time you ought to be going out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I guess it must have taken somebody as zealous and as crazy as I am to accept these midnight challenges. But I thank God that from what you see here now out there in this audience, we can see that the people who love God and people who appreciate the gospel are not all dead. No, no. Another thing I want to tell you, they're not all off-branders. Yes. They're not all fools. Look oh, at the, look look at these fellas here. <laughs> Bless my bones. Yes. <laughs> but it's a compliment not just to me, but to the Christian church. Yes. And it ought to say to the onlooker that we're not just here in this city of Houston to show ourselves off. No. Yes. But we're here on business for the king, and here is the evangelical aspect of the church. Yes, sir. That's all right, sir. Now, we had the mission aspect right. tonight. The boys yes. did that job. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And then we've had the cultural aspect, other aspects. But now then, this, uh, this approach, it was what we'd call... Three o'clock in the afternoon, perhaps, in our country. Uh-huh. And these men were going there, and they were on time. Yes. Yeah. You see, if the people go to church at the time that the people need them, God will always have something as a challenge for them. Yes. Yeah. Said that I have. And then he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he, leaping up, (laughs) stood and walked Uh and entered with them into the temple. He didn't go bug hunting. (laughs) He entered with them into the temple. Uh Now watch these three aspects of the Christian religion. Walking, leaping, and praising God. That's all there is to it. You know, some of us get in a battle sometimes trying to cut some of it out. I heard Dr. King, bless his heart. He was one of our annual speakers in Bishop College where they built a building for me. In my honor, I named it for me, rather. And while the preachers named Wednesday night in the annual Minister's Institute, T.M. Chambers Night. Yes, sir. And you know, they put that in the records and use that stuff, T.M. Chambers Night. <laughs> well, now, I think of just what it means as a challenge. Silver and gold have I none, but that that I have, give I thee. And you won't have to come here, and you won't have to be brought. Yes, sir. From childhood to manhood, you've been brought and left outside. But all the attractions within the temple were depicted by the hand of artists on the exterior so that people outside would wish they could get in. (laughs) That boy had been placed there a long time and couldn't get in. Now I could go on to tell you that the superintendent of public instruction pitched money in his cook but left him down. I could name other agencies. They went by and said, there's old so-and-so and pitched money in his cup but left the man down, still a wishful beggar at the beautiful gate. But I said, I saw two preachers. You let folks curse us all they want. You let these off-branders say there's nothing to the church. You let these folks saying, ah, preachers want money and all that kind of stuff. But I tell you right now, they don't want it all for themselves. The church that our pastor has ten persons on the payroll. Yes. And anybody think that the church is just for a preacher to make money is off brand. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. If the preacher preaches right, he'll get enough folks there to give somebody else a job. Yes. 
That's all right. Yeah. And that's why I'm holding it. <laughs> this man went in. First time he had a chance to go in where the pictures of this stuff, where, this, uh, where the stuff was that was depicted by the hand of the artist on the exterior. Yes. And uh, he walked. That's making progress. Yes. And ended with him into the temple, walking and then leaping. Now, you fellows who try to cut leaping out of the church. <laughs> You're a cold storage preacher. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you don't have to be ignorant big, big. to believe in spiritual fervor. Yeah, yeah. See, the God I'm talking about, and the one I like to preach about every Sunday when I preach, is a God of fire. Yes, yes he is. That's All right. All right. Yes, he is. Now, we wouldn't have these people here tonight, and they wouldn't come to Houston to meet this great convention if there were not preachers who believe that God is a fire. Yes. 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 They saw him in a bush once and the bush was not consumed. Yes. Now, walked and went into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. These three aspects make progress. Yes, sir. It's been a good while since my father took me in church when I was 12 years old. God has blessed my ministry because I try to walk in his footsteps. Yes, sir. And I try to follow his teaching. Yes, sir. And God's word is a complete and infallible God. Yes, sir. And as they walk, they entered into the temple walking, leaping, and praising God. I'll tell you, they depicted the three aspects of the Christian church that's all right, that are all right, even now. Thank you, sir. Walking going somewhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They were not walking away from the church, but the first walking this man did was to walk in the church. Three, yes, thirty, and forty years he'd been out in the laps of society and in the arms of people and born by the hands of others. But for the first time, he had met the superintendent of public instruction, he had met the fraternalists, he had met all of those who came in there for different purposes to market their wares, but he didn't get up until two preachers came by. <laughs> you see, they don't bluff me by making you believe that a preacher is just a kind of a sideshow and that a preacher is just somebody that wants a little money for himself. I'll tell you right now, I hear him say to these men, to this man, if you can, if you take what we have, you can get up and go and get your money. Yes. He's leaping up, stood. Now, walking means to make progress. And I could go back and tell you, I've heard you say a lot of things here tonight in this foreign mission program. My boy, wasn't it good? These men know their lesson. Told us about what's going on in Africa as a result of foreign mission. We were challenged. You didn't have but five dollars. You'd have to pull it out and give it. And I tell you, our foreign mission representatives are some of the greatest in the world. Because they know what to talk about, and they know what they're talking about when they talk about it. And therefore, I said to myself, and I did say to, to our brother here, don't have me mess it up tonight. We had such great time in this, and then even these big scholars and these foreign mission agents still sitting around here. <laughs> well now, let's start on walking, leaping, and praising God. They walk right on in the church. And when you hook a person just right with the gospel of true evangelism, he wants to go to church. <laughs> He could have been content to sit outside there and let people pitch a, a little money in his cup. But he walked across the court, the, the court ground where the big ones came out when their part was over and played croquet on the lawn. He walked right on across it. Went up the steps with Peter, Jay, Peter and John. 
Then when he got into the temple, uh, he, 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 he marketed the three things that I accept and I still believe in. Walking, making progress. We're farther up the road now than we were when my father baptized me. Yes. Thank God I'm old enough to tell you that. Fellows who were converted last Sunday don't have much experience yet. Yes. But as you've come over the years that God has brought me through and over. Yeah. 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 And if you've given your life to God and find yourself still hanging around the church and measuring arms with and exchanging views and ideas with some of the keenest ministerial minds in the world, you'll like the stuff. Yes. <laughs> now then, bless my bones, this man went in there walking. And, and they were looking. They saw all the beautiful pictures. They saw angelic, winged figures. Yes, they, they saw dazzling lights with the innumerable streaks of golden rays like open fingers. And they just got it out in that temple and they had to carry him out there. Yeah. That thing happens sometimes even now. Yeah. Walking! <laughs> this race of ours, they, they say we're too emotional. I don't care what they say. <laughs> we're on our way. And we're not on our way to hell, just going back and going about anywhere. We, go, we, we, we like that temple. And we like what we've seen in it. Now, all painting isn't done by the brush of an artist that paints our building. But ah, every preacher of the gospel who knows Henry T. Sells' 14 laws of biblical hermeneutics is a brush painter. And he has something to say that'll make folks want to hear some more. Yeah. You let folks curse the church all they want and say there's nothing to it. You let them curse the preacher out with riding in a Cadillac. Well, I know preachers who rode on the cloud. Yeah. I wonder if I can get a witness to that. <laughs> if God's people are to be the world's best people, God will provide for them the best means of travel. Yeah. Don't let anybody bluff you because you drive an automobile. I started out in a T-model turtleback Ford Coupe and used to have to hire somebody to pull me through many sand beds. <laughs> But now, they knew these other cars were coming, so they broadened and paved the highway. <coughs> Between you and me and the gate post, I wanted to drive from Los Angeles here. Some of my folks wanted to ride, and rather than leave them, I came on the plane. But I'll tell you now, we are marking time by the drumbeat of progress. <laughs> Walking! Look where we walk. If you don't see why we walk to, because we haven't gotten all the way yet. Look back sometime from whence we've come. Thank God nobody can beat this uh, whence that we had here tonight in foreign missions showing from whence we've come. I rejoice to hear them paint it. Now, bless my bones, they walked a while. <laughs> And they leaped a while. <laughs> and then they stopped and praised God a while. Yes. That's all we're doing now. Uh -huh. And you cold storage Christians, go on to sleep if you can. <laughs> I don't mean any harm, and I try my best to be intelligent, and I'm found now and then among those men who meet in the instituted Bishop College and have been a trustee there for 31 years. But yes. uh, I don't 
yes, that is for somebody to say, I've been waiting for that, but oh, I like the stuff. Yes, Our God is not an iceberg God. No. Oh, God I'm talking about is the one who scooped out the sea. Yes. Tickled the earth with his index finger. Open ravines, creeks, rivers, and rivulets. Can I get a witness? Ah! The guy I'm talking about can wake you up at midnight. Get out of your bed! Woo! Yes, sir. Sometimes when it seems like things are going dark with me. Yeah. It's hard to keep the kids back when I think of Dr. Kilgore's experience to stand yeah, here and preach right. behind all that. That's right. That's right. But I tell you how he could do it. He belongs to this gang. <laughs> because we know a way opener. Yes, sir. We know somebody that can lift you up yes, sir. when you're down. that didn't have some fire. Fire! Fire! That'll sleep with me. Fire! Fire! That'll go up in the airplane with me. Fire! That'll get me out of my bed on Sunday morning and let me hurry down to the church house and... the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It'll make you squeeze your hands. Yeah. It'll make you wet your toes in your shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Feet will get light and your tongue will get loose and yeah. something will catch you on your head and yeah. go through you. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Ooh. You're lonesome. Yes, sir. And your best friends turn that back on you. All you've got to do <laughs> turn over in your bed at midnight and talk to the God who knows how to comfort you. Get out of your bed in the morning and don't go out of that room yet. No. Get out on your knees. Put your hand on the side of the bed. You don't have to call anybody in to hear you. God can hear you. The Lord, I thank you for sparing me last night. I thank you for touching me now with the finger of love and calling me to crawl out of that bed. Father, I'm going to depend on you to guide me all day long. When my enemies want to hurt me, hold my hand and wrap the fire around me so my enemy can't stand it. Is it all right? Yeah. I don't let you know it's all right. Yeah. I know he is all right. He met me one Monday night. Yeah. Oh, he has hooked in my soul. Yeah. You let folks curse the church all they want and say there's nothing to it. You let them cuss the preacher out riding in a Cadillac. Well, I know preachers who rode on the cloud. I wonder if I can get a witness to that. If God's people are to be the world's best people, God will provide for them the best means of travel. Don't let anybody bluff you because you drive an automobile. I started out in a T-model turtleback Ford Coupe and used to have to hire somebody to pull me through many sand beds. <laughs> but now they knew these other cars were coming so they broadened and paved the highway. Between you and me and the gate post, I wanted to drive from Los Angeles here. Some of my folks wanted to ride, and rather than leave them, I came on the plane. 
But I'll tell you now, we are marking time by the drumbeat of progress. Walking! Look where we walk. If you don't see how we walk to, because we haven't gotten all the way yet. Look back sometime from whence we've come. Thank God nobody can beat this uh, bench that we had here tonight in foreign missions showing from whence we've come. I rejoice to hear them paint it. Now, bless my bones, they walked a while and they leaped a while and then they stopped and praised God a while. That's all we're doing now. And you cold storage Christians, go on to sleep if you can. I don't mean any harm, and I try my best to be intelligent, and I'm found now and then among those men who meet in the instituted Bishop College and have been a trustee there for 31 years. But oh, I don't just say this for somebody to say, I've been waiting for that, but oh, I like the stuff. Yes, <laughs> Our God is not an iceberg God. No. Well, God I'm talking about is the one who scooped out the sea. Tickled the earth with his index finger. Opened ravines, creeks, rivers, and rivulets. Can I get a witness? The God I'm talking about can wake you up at midnight. Get out of your bed! Woo! Yes, sir. Sometimes when it seems like things are going dark with me, yeah. it's hard to keep the tears back when I think of Dr. Kilgore's experience to stand yeah. here and preach right. behind all of that. That's right. That's right. But I tell you how he could do it. He belongs to this gang. Yeah. <laughs> because we know a way opener. Yes, sir. We know somebody that can lift you up yes, sir. when you're down. I wouldn't have a religion that didn't have some fire in it. Fire! Fire! That'll sleep with me. Fire! They'll go up in the airplane with me. Fire! They'll get me out of my bed on Sunday morning and let me hurry down to the church house. I like the stuff. It'll make you squeeze your hands. It'll make you wet your toes in your shoes. Feet will get light and your tongue will get loose and yeah. something will touch you on your head and yeah. go through you. Yeah. Ah, I wonder if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. When you're lonesome yes, and your best friends turn that back on you, all you've got to do is turn over in your bed at midnight and Talk to the God who knows how to comfort you. Get out of your bed in the morning and don't go out of that room yet. Get out on your knees. Put your hand on the side of the bed. You don't have to call anybody in to hear you. God can hear you. Say, Lord, I, I thank you for sparing me last night. I thank you for touching me now with the finger of love and calling me to crawl out of that bed. Father! I'm going to depend on you to guide me all day long. When my enemies want to hurt me, yeah, 